Well, welcome back, folks. Today we're going to do another on the Shot Talk series. I think this is number four since I began this uh, series a number of months ago. Today we're going to talk about two things. That is a new 18-volt uh, cordless battery platform that I'm moving on into, moving up from 12-volt, and we're going to do a update on the little Black & Decker 8-inch uh, vintage bench grinder I picked up oh, two or three months ago now, and the work I've uh, done to date on that. It's not quite done yet, but we're getting there. I've been chipping away at it during the course of the last few months, and I thought I'd give you a little bit of an update. Uh, I haven't done a lot recently with a little Yamaha, the YL1. I've done a few things here and there. I've been pretty much keeping up with the videos on that project. But as I had alluded to a number of weeks ago, the YL1 is going to take a little bit of a backseat here during the summer months as I have a number of other projects going on in the shop and at home, around the yard, house kind of thing that I want to get done in, during the summer months. So. Uh, we'll get back to the Yamaha in a little more detail later on, but uh, today we're going to do a shop talk. For the last uh, month to six weeks, I've been doing research on 18-volt cordless battery platforms. The reason being is I wanted to expand up into an 18-volt system. Today my go-to uh, drill is this little Milwaukee 12-volt, which has been a great tool, by the way. Uh, I've been very happy with this 12-volt uh, a system, I have multiple 12 volt Milwaukee tools uh, to go with the battery pack and uh, I've been real happy with that but as I migrate on to 18 volt I'm going to have to make a decision whether I stay with Milwaukee which is a totally different battery system than that 12 volt or move on to one of the others such as uh, DeWalt, Bosch, Milwaukee, Makita or some other system. After doing a research, and again, understand I was going to have to move away from the 12-volt Milwaukee no matter what, even if I stayed in the Milwaukee line, uh, my research has kept leading me back to the Makita brand. And ultimately what I decided is that based on reading, reviews, some forum, uh, forum discussion boards, looking at the products in stores up close firsthand, uh, it really boiled down to me between the Milwaukee and the Makita. Milwaukee probably, for sentimental reasons, I've been real happy with it, or the Makita. Uh, ultimately, I decided, obviously, to go with the Makita because um, it just seemed to have the best combination of features, price, and reviews, and user recommendations from multiple sources, not just one. So uh, a week or so ago, I ordered this 18-volt uh, Lithium ion, uh, this is an impact, quarter inch impact uh, driver. It's not a drill. The Milwaukee is a drill. This is not an impact. This is just for drilling holes. And, and it really does nice for that. It's small and it's compact, reasonably lightweight. This is really an impact driver, uh, which I wanted for assembling and disassembling projects around the shop and yard and home. And uh, it's a fairly new model, came out I think almost two years ago. And it's a model XDT13, and I think there's usually one after that, an XDT131. Came with a charger, of course, and a little tool bag. I don't usually use tool bags much. I've got three or four of those around now. Uh, came also with a 3 amp hour battery, which isn't uh, significant capacity. That's, think of that as a fuel level in the battery. That's kind of an average mid-size uh, battery pack. So I ultimately end up buying additional batteries, I'm sure. But my intention is to use this as a baseline is to expand into more 18 volt cordless tools. I'd like to get a blower for cleaning out the shop and my pole barn and my driveway and those kind of things. Uh, I would like to move into a cordless battery powered uh, string trimmer. Some people call them weed whackers, which actually I believe is a brand name. I call them a string trimmer, the nylon string trimmer. I like to get away from gasoline powered string trimmers. I have two and at least two. I might even have three. 
but I don't use enough of a string trimmer to really warrant uh, gasoline powered anymore. And I think a uh, cordless system would be just great. There's no maintenance. You don't have to deal with um, putting it away in the fall and doing your, your preventive maintenance for the winter and all of those kind of things. And there's other tools I think I would like to expand into. So I chose to go with a little Makita. I ordered it online and had it, believe it or not, within 48 hours. It was on my step. And I uh, haven't really had a chance to use it yet because I haven't really needed to. I've got to get an adapter here for the chuck. I use a quarter inch hex so that I can go to quarter inch or three eighths drive uh, for my sockets, those kind of things. But you'll be seeing more of this in the future as I use it for uh, various projects in the shop. And I just thought I'd share my thinking behind this and uh, my latest tool acquisition. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're going to move on now to uh, an update on the Black & Decker 8-inch vintage uh, bench grinder. Well, I'm going to give you a shot of the inside of the um, little Black & Decker uh, grinder, pencil grinder that I've been reconditioning. This is not a restoration, as I think I mentioned before. I'm really just reconditioning it. It's been repainted, as you can see. Really, this shot shows uh, the wiring. I had to clean up all the wiring. Um, it was uh, abysmal. I don't know who did this, but um, nonetheless, I had to cut some of it away. The original wires coming from the motor. There's three wires down in here that come from the motor. Obviously, those are original, and those are in good, were in good condition. I did take pictures of how it was wired uh, when I took it apart, and then I used wire nuts rather than just twisting the wires together and wrapping with some inexpensive uh, electrical tape, as was done before. New power cord coming in here. Most of the hardware, in fact, all of the hardware here is original, including this wire clamp here at the bottom. The bolts holding the uh, base, this base to the motor itself. Those are all original. I'm not sure I'll be able to use all original hardware going forward, but we'll see. And I want to give you this shot before I go ahead and button it up. Here's the capacitor right here. And these two wires with these plug-on connectors go on the capacitor terminals right here, and they just plug it onto it or slide onto it. I have test run uh, the unit just a few minutes ago, and it does run, runs fine. And so I obviously I got the wiring correct. So next step will be to uh, complete the base unit uh, with the capacitor on the inside and... Uh, you know, button up the wiring, button up the base. I'm going to end up putting new feet on it, rubber feet. I think I'm going to use these. I picked up at a local hardware store. The originals, well, there's nothing left of the originals. And those will fit uh, something like, like this and then go and screw into the four holes or the four corners so that it can be mounted onto uh, the pedestal, which I already have, and I haven't really... Uh, gotten that far yet obviously so we'll put this back together then I'm going to put the rest of the unit uh, together that mounts on the end of the motor here on each side and somewhere along the way I'll bring you back and show you as we're, I'm getting closer to the final assembly <laughs> Here's a stand pedestal I'm intending to use with that Black & Decker grinder. Uh, this is just an inexpensive Harbor Freight unit. I've actually had it for a while. I got it on sale a number of months back now, and uh, I bought it anticipating using it with, uh, eventually, an 8-inch bench grinder. It wasn't very expensive, but it's probably serviceable. I'll probably end up welding the column the tube column there to the base. That's just held in right now with pinch bolts that you can see right there. 
and I don't like that. It, it, uh, I don't think it's going to be secure enough for my taste. So I'm going to probably attempt to weld it. It might be a little tricky. That's that's fairly thin wall tubing, and then that cast, I think that steel, cast steel base, quite a bit heavier. So getting the combination right to weld that is going to require a little work, a little uh, finessing. Uh, the rest of it's pretty much good to go. I did set the bench grinder on top and it seemed to line up pretty well with the holes. I might have to finesse uh, the, uh, some of the slots to work with the bench grinder, but uh, other than that, I think uh, it'll be serviceable for my needs. I flipped the uh, stand upside down. This is the base now. I think what I'm going to do uh, or attempt to do is I really don't want to bolt this to the floor even though that's what it's intended for is I prefer mobility in my tools. I bought a bag of these uh, hockey pucks. These are practice hockey pucks and they're very firm. They're hard. I think I'm going to use those or try to use those as isolators. I think you can see that right there. My thinking is uh, that's a, almost a half inch hole. I'm sure it's metric. It's probably 12 millimeter something like that, comes out real close to a half. I'm going to drill a hole, a center hole, in each of these hockey pucks on my lathe. And then I think I'm going to use a carriage bolt, countersink that so it draws up into the, the puck so it, it's countersunk. And then bolt each of the three hockey pucks the top of the nut and bolt on the opposite side, which should actually be the top, to act as um, isolators and see how that works. That's a pretty smooth grinder and my only concern would be with it walking over time. We'll see how that works out. These aren't very expensive. I bought them at a local uh, sporting goods store. A bag of them, I think I got I don't know, eight or ten in a bag, maybe even twelve. But that's my um, first solution to uh, creating a vibration damper for this this uh, stand so that's uh, that's current update on the little black and decker grinder as usual thanks for watching